And so what we decided to do is just take the month of uh, May here and study the women, the women who uh, just some of them are mentioned in Hebrews 11, some aren't. We're going to draw some, some truths and spiritual truths from, from women. And then in June next month, we're going to draw some truths from the lives of some of the men of faith, some of the legends of, of men. So um, here's our theme verse, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, right after Hebrews chapter 11, where it kind of goes into explaining all the different legends and the characters of the Bible. He then turns the page and says, Therefore, since we're surrounded by these legends, such a great cloud of witnesses, he says, and I want to point your attention again to that word, witnesses, something you may not know, um, but all, the, all those who have gone before you in the Lord and who are in heaven now, they are witnessing our life. They, they actually can see, watch, they are witnesses to us running our race. And so he says, man, since we got that, all these, there's such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And I, I like that the Bible kind of makes mention that, that, that the race is hard, right? The race is tough. Life is a struggle sometimes. And, and I really hope, that's why I hope like discovery is that, is that encouraging place for you to get some wind back in your cells and some life and some encouragement. And that's one of my roles as a pastor, as your pastor, is just to just to get that encouragement back into you and maybe to help you, you know, let go of some things that are, that are tripping you up and some sin that's tangling you up in the race that you're running. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So here's the creative idea of this series, this eight weeks we're doing, a total of eight weeks we're doing some character studies. The idea of this series is, like, since we have this great cloud of witnesses, these legends that are watching us, we painted a picture of this grandstand of heaven, this stadium of heaven and the crowd of heaven cheering us on and roaring and encouraging us. And here's the, the thought was, what if we can pull one person from that stand, from the grandstands of heaven, and what if they could just take a lap with us and run this race with us? And what would they say based on their life message and what they learned about God and faith in their journey? What wisdom would they give us and what encouragement? would they give us? So last week, we pulled down from the grandstands of heaven. We pulled Rahab down. And that was an important one, you guys. If you missed that, go check out week number one of Legends with Rahab, because we intentionally started with an unlikely legend. Rahab was a prostitute who then just became actually mentioned in the, the Hebrews chapter 11. Here are the, the legends of, of faith there, the heroes of faith in that chapter. She ends up becoming one of the great grandmother's of Jesus. And we intentionally started with that because I want every single one of you to know that God is writing a great story with your life. If you let him, if you give him the pen, he can write a great story. And it doesn't matter what's happened in the past. It doesn't matter what lineage you come from or what sins maybe you've committed and, and wrong. It does not matter. Like God is writing your future and it's a great future. And so as we study these legends, what, what I would love for you to do is not to allow them just inspire you and, and like, you know, encourage you, but let them encourage you to greatness, okay? Because God, God can uh, and God does have greatness in your story. If you let him, if you let him, he will. So today what we're going to do is, is we're going to pull down and we're going to call down from the great grandstands of heaven, Mary, the mother of Jesus. And so Mary is one of the most misunderstood people in all the Bible. There's a lot of misunderstandings about, about Mary. And so we're going to study her life. Mary, a, a lot of theologians believe that Mary got that announcement from the angel Gabriel. Um, when she was about 16 years old, imagine that, ladies, imagine that. 16 years old, an angel visits and says, hey, um, you're, I know you haven't been with a man, but you're going to get pregnant. And by the way, your baby's going to be God, right? <laughs> There's the things that are going on in Mary's mind right here. I believe Mary, if she were to come down and she's going to run a lap with us, she'd say something like this. When God asks you to do something outside of your comfort zone, and by the way, God is notorious for doing this. God always stretches us. He always asks us to do things outside of our understanding, outside of our comfort zone. I'm telling you, God is trying to meet with every single one of you. I guarantee you, he's trying to meet with you more than you realize it. Like he's trying to have a moment with you. He's trying to have this, this encounter with you. He, and he's always speaking. Sometimes we're not on the right frequency, but God is always speaking and trying to have an encounter with you, which is, our, which is our church service isn't even really a church service. It's just, we're just trying to facilitate a moment with God for you. That's all we're doing. And I really believe that an hour and 15 minutes at Discovery will do you good. But a moment with God will change you forever. And so I believe Mary, she would, she would say, hey man, when, 
I, when God asks you to do something outside of your comfort zone, don't miss your moment with God. Don't miss your moment with God. See, because wrapped in that moment is destiny. God, and, and, and destiny is not supposed to be this great mystery. Destiny is, is a decision. Destiny, yeah, it's a daring decision. It's a, it's, it's a, a decision that, that is counterintuitive, but destiny is fulfilled. Listen, one opportunity at a time. One God moment at a time, our destiny is fulfilled. And whether it's through tragedy, God's trying to get your attention. Opportunities, he's trying to get your attention or through presence or through worship. Like God is trying to get our attention. He does it in a variety of ways, doesn't he? For Mary, it was a visitation of an angel. For Moses, it was a burning bush that God got his attention. Through, for the apostle Paul, it was this bright shining light on the road to Damascus that got his, atten- got his attention. God rarely does the same thing twice. He rarely has these moments with us in the same way like he does maybe these people in the Bible. But I'm telling you, it's, it's, and it's different for every single one of us, but I'm telling you, he's trying to have a moment with you. He is. He's trying to facilitate your life to just, just to shape your destiny with a moment with God. And I believe every one of these legends, I believe one, one, that they would, if they could come and speak to us, they'd say, hey, it doesn't always look like the way you think. It doesn't always, like, it's, it, it happens outside of, like, the way that sometimes you imagine it, like, and I believe Mary, what she would say is like, you know what? Um, I had my own God moment, and I think uh, you can have your own, but there's some things you need to understand about God moments. Jot some notes with me, you guys. Take these down, because God's trying to have a moment with you. Here's the first thought I want to give you about God moments, and that is that God moments often seem on the surface as impossibilities. Okay, they seem on the surface as impossibilities. So God's going to come along, and he's going to say, hey, I got a challenge for you. Hey, I have a direction for your life. Or he might come along and say, hey, I need to get something out of you. You don't even know it's there, but there's, I need to get that out of you. Or, or, or he's, I need to get something inside of you. I want to put something inside of your life. But he does it in a, in, a, in a variety of ways, you guys. And when it happens, here's the first thought. It'll often be, I don't get it. God, how are you going to do that? I don't understand how that's going to happen, how that's going to work. Even even in worship, God was trying to have a moment with some of you, and you know what the Bible says about worship, like to lift your hands and declare your voice and and to sing a new song. You know all those things, but you didn't do it, and you stiff-armed the moment with God. And some of you know, like he was trying to have a moment, and you stiff-armed God. But listen, our human limitations are only opportunities for God to show his power, Okay. So don't get hung up on the impossibility because obedience is your responsibility. The outcome is God's, all right? That's his. That's not, that's not ours to worry about. And Mary had her own impossible situation she was faced with. Let's go to the announcement there in Luke chapter 1. The angel tells her, you'll conceive and give birth to a son, and you're going to call him Jesus, and he's going to be great and stuff, and yeah, he's going to be God. <laughs> he's God. He's going to be son of, the son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And of course, she says what a lot of us say in our God moments, and she says, I don't get it. Like, I don't don't get it, God. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. And a lot of times, we face situations like this in God moments, we let our brains take over. Okay? And this is is important for us to understand. Let me just tell you, because you need to understand this. You and I are at a disadvantage being 2,000 years removed from Mary's God moment to the God moments God wants to have with you today. And and the disadvantage is that there is a, that that knowledge has increased. That's, and and there ain't nothing wrong with knowledge. Don't get me wrong. Any intellectual, like I love knowledge. Don't get me wrong at all. But the studies show that up until 1900s, they say that knowledge doubled every 100 years. Every 100 years, knowledge doubled. But after, after World War II, they said that knowledge doubled every 25 years. So now, though, now we're living in this, in this age where information and knowledge is so accessible. And I'm not talking about specific knowledge of a, of a certain field. I'm talking about human, the human knowledge base, uh, you know, the, just mankind knowledge, okay? They're saying now knowledge is doubling every 12 months. Every 12 months. Now, so... What I want you to understand about that is you and I just have to be careful of depending on our knowledge so much 
that God can't do anything in our lives outside of our knowledge base. Okay? That's important for us to understand. In fact, a lot of us, we depend on our on quote-unquote facts more than, more than faith, and it's keeping the miracle out of your life. When you let your brains take over, or, or when you let your, your brain lead the way in your God moment, the, the result will never exceed your knowledge. It'll never exceed your, your own capacity. So, so it will, your life will never exceed what your eyes can see, what your mind can think, what your hands can build yourself. It'll never exceed your capacity. But when you let faith lead in your God moment, it will always exceed your capacity into a whole other realm of supernatural. What is that? Well, what your, what your eyes cannot see because faith is the evidence of things hoped for and things not seen. Okay, and, and, and what your mind can't even imagine because God can do exceedingly abundantly above that which you ask, dream, or imagine. And that which you can't even work with your hands or build with your hands because it's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit, says the Lord. When you let faith lead in your God moment. Now, don't get me wrong. Again, I love knowledge. Knowledge is a good thing. How many of you like AC? I like air conditioning. Come on now. There's some great things we have that 2,000 years ago they don't have. But, but this is one of the things that we are at a disadvantage in our, in our God moments is, is, I mean, you just need to understand that God will do things that you don't understand. And if you want to have a moment with God and you want your life to be shaped and your destiny be shaped by God moments, you need to invite that and embrace that into your life. That God's going to move in ways that I don't understand. And I invite it and I embrace it and it's okay. I'm telling you, Jesus often encouraged people because of that like this. In Mark chapter 10, he said, with man, this is impossible. Yeah, I know, Mary, you can't do it. I know you don't understand it. I know you, of course you don't understand it because I'm, I'm working outside of your knowledge base and outside of your understanding. I don't fit there. <laughs> of course you don't understand it. With man, this is impossible, but not with God. Come on, say this last line with me. All things are possible with God. Come on, if you're going to have a God moment, you need to to discipline yourself, not to get caught up in your head, but to lead your God moments from your heart, to allow faith to lead you into that moment. Here's the second thing we learn about God moments, and that is that when God moments come, just say yes. Come on, man. Just say, just say yes to the God moments. Remember, Mary said, I don't know. When she, at first, she was like, I don't know how that's going to work. I don't get how it's going to work. But literally, the very next verse, she says in Luke chapter 1, verse 38, she says, but I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't get it, but you're God and I'm not. So may your word be fulfilled. So how, do you, how does that work? How do you get through the tough times? How do you get through those impossible situations that God is leading in you into. He's going to lead you into them. And he wants to work in those. How do, you, how do you get through those situations that seem like impossibilities? It's in those situations that your hope must weigh more than your questions. Have you ever thought about the questions swirling around in Mary's head at this point? I mean, the, the fears, and, and I'm sure there was a list of questions Mary had, because now she's 16 years old. Who, what's the first conversation she has to have with? Mom and dad, right? She, and it, no matter how she paints the picture, okay, mom and dad are not going to believe that story, right? They're gonna, what are they going to believe? They're going to say something like, yeah, right, you and Joseph been fooling around, right? That's it. That's, that's, that's what they think. There ain't no way she's getting around that. And then she's got to have the conversation with Joseph. And, and again, no matter, she, oh, she, oh, the angel, and I'm, it's God. God's in my belly. I don't care how she explains it to Joseph. What do you think he's going to say? Who you been messing with? Who you been messing around with? Who you cheating on me with? That's, and then the religious leaders, do you know that the law for getting pregnant outside of marriage that day, they would drag that woman into the middle of the street and stone her to death. Think about the fears, the questions, the anxieties that, that, that she is under right here, all for, listen, all for a moment that God initiated. God initiated that moment that was going to cause these questions and people to criticize and call her names and diminish her worth and value. God initiated that moment for her. I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to trust God, isn't it? 
It's hard sometimes when you don't understand. And when he leads you to the valley of the shadows of darkness and you go, why is it so dark? I can't, I don't understand what God is doing. I'm reminded about that synagogue ruler, Jarius. Jarius um, had, his, had a daughter who was sick, who was on her deathbed. She's breathing like her last, last breaths. And so dad, he thinks like the last thing, I, the, the last stitch effort is I need a miracle. I need to go find Jesus. So he runs out and he, he hears that Jesus is doing miracles. He's around. He goes and finds him and says, Jesus, my daughter tells him the story. My daughter is sick, but you can make her well. And he says, lead on. Take me to her. So Jerry starts to lead Jesus to his daughter. And I'm sure he's in a hurry. I'm sure he's trying to get there. But something happens on the way to Jerry's house. A woman with an issue of blood in the midst of a crowd that was gathering around Jesus reached out and touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus felt this power emanate from him, and he stops, and he slows down. He starts to minister to this woman and, and minister to his disciples. And, and all the while, I bet Jairus is going, Jesus, you're on my time. You said you were going to come to my house. You got my daughter. Let's go, let's go, let's go, people. Get out of the way. And you, you got to think like Jairus, his heart is for his daughter who's breathing her last breath. And then the news comes. His servants, two of them, come and say, hey, Jairus, I'm so, dad, She's dead. She's gone. It's too late. And then Jesus hears them, hears this conversation, in the, and I'm sure he hears the breaking heart of Jairus, the father, as well. And in Mark chapter 5, it says, Jesus overhearing what they were saying, Jesus tells Jairus, hey, don't listen to your fears. Don't listen to your doubts. Hey, don't, 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 don't be afraid. Just believe. And I know that sounds very simplistic for some of you today, but can I just get you to a place to no matter what you are going through and what your impossible situation is and what the dream that God has given you maybe or the challenge or difficulty or season or valley that you were in, don't be afraid, just believe. Here's the last one. God moments. Your moment with God will open up the door for God's best in your life. It will. I'm just telling, and that's what keeps you going, man, through it because, because uh, it, it is a struggle. Sometimes it's a struggle, especially when you're walking the walk of faith and the life of faith. It's hard sometimes because you cannot. It's outside of your understanding. So there's a lot of mental battles and, and faith struggles and heart struggles, and it's hard sometimes. But on the other side of that is God's blessing, is God's best. And if you remember the story, after the angel gave the message to Mary, she immediately she got out of Nazareth. Because she knew, my goodness, the ridicule that was going to come from all the people. And she goes to her cousin Elizabeth's house, who Elizabeth at this time is pregnant with John the Baptist. And as uh, soon as Mary arrived in Luke chapter 1, verse 42, Elizabeth, in a loud voice, a voice she exclaimed, she, she cried out, and I'm telling you, you got to get some people in your life like this, church. You need some people in your life like Elizabeth. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. And then she said it a third time. Blessed is the one who believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Hey, honey, I know you're nervous. I know you're scared about what people are going to say, and they're going to call you that girl. But come on, I'm telling you, there's blessing on the other side of this. God has blessing waiting for us on the other side of our obedience. Church, let me say it this way. Whatever you have on this side of your disobedience is nothing compared to this side of the blessing that God has in obedience. It's nothing compared to it, you guys. And let me tell you a little secret, especially for some of you new Christians, okay? You need to understand this and hear this because when you've been serving God for a long time and you've, been, you've seen God do things that only God can do and God moment after God moment after God moment, I mean, it just, you don't even have to ask questions anymore to God. It's just at this point, like God can say anything in my life and, I'm, and I, my response is, let's go, God. Let's go. I'm ready, God. Let's go. Man, and so, so fast forward now 30 years from Mary's first God moment recorded at 16 years old. 30 years later, it's, Jesus is beginning his ministry, and he does his first miracle at the wedding of Cana, remember? And so there's a problem at this wedding. They run out of wine. It's a big social faux pas. You don't run out of, out of wine at weddings. And so Mary now, after having 
you know, experience with God moments. And not only one, but come on, she raised Jesus. You know she had more God moments, right? 30 years of raising the Son of God. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted in all ways like we were tempted. He experienced everything that we experienced, yet he was without sin. Come on, moms, how many like that kid, <laughs> right? Without, come on, so you know she experienced some crazy, awesome, miracle type stuff. Like, this kid's not abnormally awesome. So, so and she did, you know, the, the, anyway, I'm not going to get too sidetracked and tell you some what I think would happen, but she's got some stories. I know she does, and it gets to this point in the wedding in John chapter 2, verse 5, and she, where she's all, she sees the problem. She goes, Jesus, get over here. Jesus, Jesus come on, come on. And she's like, uh, whatever he, I don't know what he's going to say. I don't know what he's going to tell you to do. But just whatever he says, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Watch it, watch it. Just do it. Just do whatever he says. I'm telling you, it's going to be good. It's good. I think you can, you can see the faith in mom knowing, like, after God moments with Jesus, like, and you got to get there. And I'm telling you, your God moments will take you to this place of so much faith that you just are able to say yes to whatever God says. And I'm telling you, it opens up God's best for your life. It opens up God's bless and, and blessing for your life. So by this point, she's like, I don't know what he's going to do, but it's, it's going to be good. So Mary, I believe she would tell us, hey, when, you, when God has you do something that you don't understand, don't miss that moment. Don't miss that miracle. Don't miss your moment with God. Uh, but before she leaves, I think she'd tell us how to cultivate God moments, how to cultivate God moments. So let's, let's spend a little time learning and listening to the legend on how, how do we cultivate God moments? Because he's trying to meet with you, church. He wants to meet with you. We just need to create the atmosphere, the climate. Then we need to cultivate a, a moment with God in our lives. How do we do that? Write some notes with me, guys. Number one, we have to stay connected to God. Okay? That makes sense, right? You want, you want to have a God moment with God to connect to God? So here, say, say, let me say this. Stay really, really, really close to God. Like, get close to God, in the best way, the best way I know how to do that, that I, can, that I can give you on how to just draw close to God is just one word. Are you ready for it? Worship. Worship God, man. Like, t- turn off the noise of the world. Turn off the TV and put away your phone and get away from the noise and the clutter and just, wor- like, put on some worship music and worship God, like, like declare with your mouth and with your hands and with your heart the goodness. I'm telling you, it attracts, it cultivates moments with God. This is, that's why we're doing that night of worship in the announcement that you guys saw. We have a night of worship coming up on Wednesday night, the 23rd. This is something we're going to be doing now every month. Every fourth Wednesday of the month, we're going to have this midweek, midweek uh, experience. There's going to be a message. It's going to be a shorter sandwich in between two worship experiences. The, it, the night is just for us to encounter God, to have a moment with God. So here's a, a little bit of the Christmas story, because God's trying to have a moment with you guys. Luke chapter 2, again, verse 16, it says, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told of them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. And they're, okay, so they're shouting, they're amazed, they're just like, like exclaiming, but not Mary. Mary's doing something very, very beautiful, very different. All that's going on, she knew something special was happening. It says, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary was a worshiper. In church, you need to take time to ponder, to treasure that God is close, that God is near. In fact, John chapter 15, Jesus, Jesus said, hey, unless you are close to me, unless you are connected to me, you cannot accomplish anything in life. You can't do anything. He said, he said I'm the vine and you're the branches. Apart from me, you don't bear any fruit. It can't happen. You have to be connected to the source of life. He said, I'm the source of life. I'm the vine. You, got, you should go read the whole. It's a beautiful chapter, John 15. Let me read you one verse out of that whole chapter, verse 5, when Jesus says, when you're joined with me and I with you, I love this. He says, it's an intimate relationship. And this word, he said, it's organic. Like, it's not robotic. I don't just do my Sunday deal. And even your devotions can sometimes get robotic. And, and so he says, no, 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 it's not, it's not from duty. It's not like a, a routine. Like, it's just 
he's saying, I, I want to know you, and I want you to know me. I want this to flow from your life. I want it to be an organic, intimate relationship, and you'll reap an abundant harvest. But separated, you can't produce a thing. So you, you, want, a, you want a moment with God? You want a moment with God that'll shape your destiny, church? Stay close. Stay close, connected to God. Here's the second thing that's going to shape your God moment. Here it is. Number two, stay connected to your purpose. Stay connected to your purpose. I think there were days that Mary um, hated being Mary. You ever have those days, anyone can be real, where you just go, I hate my life. <laughs> anyone have those days, I just hate my life right now. I think Mary had that often because even after Jesus was born, I think, I think there were still, she's walking around town, I think there were still days where some people looked on and said, oh, there's that illegitimate child. Oh, there's that girl. That's, a, that's that one that told that, that story. Yeah, yeah. How did she make it? How did she endure through all of that shame and, and criticism from people? You want to know how? Purpose. She had purpose, man. And, and see, this is, a, this is an important secret. Some of you, you're, all of us are going to endure pain. Life is, life is difficult. Every one of us are going to have pain. Just some of us are enduring pain without purpose, and it's why you give up all the time. It's why you're up and down. It, 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 when, you, when you are in pain without purpose, it has you pull away from the very presence of the person you need to be close to, to have a moment with, to get the strength, peace, and joy you need to sustain you through that season. Okay? So this is... Pain, we're all going to endure pain, but we need to learn how to endure pain with purpose. And Mary, man, she had purpose. When Jesus was dedicated in the temple, check it out, Simeon sees, sees them. Simeon's a prophet, and Simeon blessed them. So it wasn't even for the, just for the baby. He, he blessed them, it says. The, and he said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined. You see, I think, I think Mary made it because she knew she wasn't raising a normal child. There was purpose. And by the way, all parents in here, you're not raising normal children either. Your children are destined, that they have purpose and destiny and gifts and calling inside of every one of them. And Mary endured that pain with purpose. She knew that this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. He just, he's going to be special. And this is such a big part of what we do here at Discovery. And what I get to do as, a, as your pastor is just, Discovery, all the programming here at Discovery is actually help, is structured in such a way to help you discover your purpose in Christ. Like why you are here, why you exist, to love God, love each other, and change the world. And it looks different for every single person. Like everything we do at Discovery is help you, is, is to help you take the steps necessary to discover your purpose. And I'm telling you, your life will never make sense until you know that. Your pain will never make sense until you know that. And here's the thing. Some of you know your purpose and you're not living it. And I'm telling you, you're going to miss your God moment. Because you if you want to have a moment with God, you need to stay connected to God, but you also need to stay connected to your purpose. And that's why I always... 2 Timothy chapter 1, I always try to do this and encourage you to fan into flames the gift of God, the dream that's inside of you, the vision that's inside of you, the destiny, the purpose that's inside of you, man, to fan that thing into flames. I'm telling you, it will redefine you and it will, it will prepare the way for your God moment. So stay connected to God. Stay connected to your purpose. Number three, an important one, stay connected to the people who will encourage you. Stay connected to the people who will encourage you. I think one of the genius things that Mary did is she got out of Dodge, baby. She's, she, like, she knew if I stay here, I'm going to get I'm gonna ridicule, criticism, negativity, all that junk. She went to somebody who wouldn't ridicule her or call her names, but would speak life into her situation. Look, at this is so important. Listen, some of you, the, the people that you are around are robbing you of your God moment because they're not speaking life into your purpose. They're not speaking life into your calling. They're not speaking life into the things of God and blessing into the things of God. They're speaking 
death and negativity and criticism and disparaging and tearing things down. And I'm telling you, those, those relationships are keeping you from a moment with God. And so this is what some of you need to do. Some of you need to actually cut some of those. Rela- you want to have a moment with God? You got to cut some of those off and get some healthy relationships in. And some of you, you probably see yourself like, man, I've been a little bit negative and critical and cynical and stuff. Yeah, that's, that's probably why those people got into your life because like attracts like. Okay, and so that's probably why they're there. So what you need to do, the best thing that you can do to get out of that cycle that is keeping you from these divine encounters from God whispering to you, leading you and shaping your destiny is to get around other people who know how to speak over your life and into your life and who can encourage you, the blessing inside of you, the calling and the gifts and the future inside you. Get around those people, maybe sever a few of the ones that are preventing you from your destiny. Get around people who encourage you. It says that Mary in Luke chapter 156, Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months. After she got pregnant, she stayed there for three months. So I'm, te- I'm telling you, we, we uh, are in this break of small groups, but they're about to, they're about to launch right now. So I want to encourage you, like I always do in the breaks when we, we get ready to get into, a, into this season of groups, actually sign up, start next Sunday. You're going to see all the groups that are offered. You want to have a moment with God? Okay, this is an area that some of you have already built walls up. Yeah, I can get connected to God. I can even get connected to purpose. But to get connected to healthy relationships and then maintain those healthy relationships, I'm telling you, you need those if you want to have moments with God that will shape your destiny. So the best way to do that is not only sever some of those old ones that are pulling you away, but get into some new ones. Get into a group at Discovery. Find one that's right for you. I talk to people all the time. I talk to someone at, at Step 1, the Step 1 class, so in that class, they said, hey, I tried a group, and it really wasn't just for me. I really didn't feel like I connected. And I said, what did you try out anymore? No, I, I didn't. And so I'm going to encourage you. What I encouraged this young lady, I said, keep going to a group until you find your sisterhood. Keep going to a group until you find your brothers. Like, you, I'm telling you, there is a place for you where you're going to step into that, and you're going to feel at home. You're going to feel like, man, these are my sisters. I feel like I've known them my whole life. Like, God is calling me to do life with these people, and they're people who encourage you and speak blessing into you and life into you. They're not people who are going to be negative and critical with you. They're going to speak encouraging over your life and future. You need it. You need it. If you want to carve out moments with God, you got to get into a group, all right? I encourage every single one of you, get into a group in the summer. Even if you're on vacation and stuff, jump into one. Here's what Hebrews chapter 10 says. It says, let us hold unswervingly. None of this wavering, he says. No, no, let us hold unswerving to the hope we profess. For he who promises faithful, but then he answers kind of the dilemma here. How do you hold on to your faith unswervingly without the up and down, the hot and cold? He says, let us consider how we need people in our life who spur us on, who encourage us to love and to good deeds and not give up meeting together. Now, he's not talking about the large church group right here. He's talking about the small house-to-house fellowship. He said, hey, let's not give up meeting together as some in their habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more, as you see the day of Jesus' return approaching. Let me just say one more about this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to my last point. Um, some of you have been burned so bad by church and religious people that you put some walls up, okay? And, it's, and, and these walls, listen, you think they're protecting you from, and you, you, you may feel justified in why, you're, why those walls are there and why you're not letting church people, church people in. But what you're also preventing and keeping out is your moment with God, Okay? And, and, and I care for you. I love you. And I want you to experience these God moments that'll shape your destiny, that'll carve out, that, that'll just, you know, throw off some of those things that are tangling and the sin that's, that's holding you back. And, and so you can run this race with perseverance and not give up. You need to get around some people that encourage you. Here's the last one. Let me give you the scripture first, because um, some time ago I was looking into Mary's story and kind of looking at it from the mother's eyes. And, 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 and Mary looking at the, the, the crucifixion um, from her perspective, you know, and here she is, this mom who's raised Jesus and who's, you know, taken care of the scraped knee and seen her son, 
executed. You know, blood dripping down his body, you know, down the cross, pool of blood, and she's there seeing, seeing it all. And the Bible says he was marred beyond a recognition that his skin was just hanging. And, and, but not mom, though. Mom, moms always know their sons, so it doesn't matter how far away they've gone or what they've done, they, they know. And so she can recognize her son. And here she is, it says in John chapter 19, she's at the foot of the cross, and she's actually with her small group. That's who she's with. She, she's, she has these relationships these, that are encouraging her in her difficult time. It says, Jesus' mother, his aunt, and other Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, the adulteress that, that Jesus beautifully forgave in John chapter um, 8 is that story, stood at the foot of the cross, and she's watching her son get the death penalty. She's watching her son, you know, get the lethal injection, get the electrocution, get crucified. And Jesus saw his mother... And the disciple he loves standing nearby. And I just I want you to picture that with me. This Jesus, her son, seeing the brokenness of her mom looking on at this scene. And, and seeing her brokenness. And, and, and now um, he says, you know, mom, Mary, I enjoyed being your son. And I enjoyed you being my mom. But I can't be your son anymore. Look, here's mom, here's her son. And, and, and John, here's your, here's your mom. I need you to take care of mom because I can't do it anymore. I, I, have, I have to do this. I have to pay for sins. I have to go. I, I, and I have to go sit at the right hand of my father. And I, and, and I need to go so I can send the Holy Spirit and power to, to fill and to, and to empower you to do what, to accomplish the mission that I'm giving you to accomplish. So I can't, I can't be your son anymore. This, is, this earth relationship is ending right now, and I need to, I need to go take care of my mission. And of my calling. So, mom, here's your son, son, John. Here's your, here's your mom. So now, how, how can Mary endure? How did Mary get by the pain, the excruciating pain of seeing that? Write it down. You got to stay connected to the bigger picture. Just so easy to, in, in the moments of your pain and your struggle and your hurt, to get so myopic and so short-sighted that we, 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 we think this is all there is and this is all the, the season has for me. It is painful. It is difficult. And we lose sight of the bigger picture. I believe Mary knew. Mary knew he had to pay for sins. Mary knew what had to be done. That's what caused her to endure that season of, of struggle. And here's the bigger picture. Because earth is not your home. You know what the bigger picture is? There's a home that you're going to in heaven. That's the bigger picture that you always need to keep before you. That there is, that this is not home. And if you think that this is all there is, then your life is going to be full of pain and, and difficulty and regret. But when you fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, stay connected to the bigger picture. Come on, let's bow our heads in prayer right there.